Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Really sorry I can't be at the meeting with you this afternoon. I'm just going to run through a few slides just to tell you some things about the FlexiLearn project. This is one of um, the three uh, pro funded projects we have uh, from the GIST Transformations program. Uh, this one started uh, back in the last year in November and it's running until the 31st of October 2013. So, oh, and I should just tell you it's it's focused around mobile learning, um, but it has a strong link to the broader uh, concept of flexible learning. So um, the main objectives of the FlexiLearn project, I thought I've put on this slide three, I think, uh, that are the main objectives. The first is to, uh, very short, sharp and blunt, it's basically to get as many of our students and staff as we can to download and start using the Blackboard Mobile Learn app, which we started um, paying for at the beginning of this academic year. And, and essentially, in, in, in getting to, to do this, we're trying to encourage them just to use it very simply, at least, to um, get information and messages and announcements. The second uh, objective is to work up, ideally in each school, a pilot or, or more than one pilot um, with academics that, that undertake to make use of a mobile learning approach as part of the overall delivery of um, a taught module. And then the third uh, main objective, the broader one, it is to develop or help develop a vision for mobile, and I put in there in brackets, flexible learning. Uh, at the university. So the next slide just summarises some of the things we've done to date. We've been promoting the Mobile Learn app mainly, oh, exclusively actually, through um, the main Blackboard product via uh, focused announcements to students. And um, app downloads, which were at a level of 1,200 back in October 2011, have now gone up, I checked just yesterday, to nearly 6,000. So that's quite good news, I think. Uh, the second bullet point on this slide, we've also formed um, uh, an academic practitioner group, 46 academic staff from all, across all the schools uh, currently in that grouping. They've come together because they have a common interest in mobile learning. They either already practice some form of mobile learning approach or they're keen to find out more and try to develop mobile learning approaches. And the third thing I think uh, uh, we've done, which is quite important, is it, this is a strategic. Uh, this is a strategic importance. We've, we've made a good connection between the project to the uh, Learning Futures Initiative, which is being um, led by the Deputy Vice Chancellor Ricky Morgan Tamasinas. Um, and that initiative is is operating over a time scale of a couple of years. It, something that uh, was born out of academic council and is going to look at, uh, in the broadest sense, at the future of learning and teaching at Westminster. And one of the main driving uh, drivers behind the initiative is to work out what Westminster needs to do and should do to make its curriculum more flexible. OK, so what are we up to next on the project? Well, um, I've been working with Lindsay for a, f a couple of weeks now, or maybe longer, um, to produce a leaflet that will go out to all students in September, which will be uh, an effort to push the mobile learning app even further amongst the students. In fact, this will be the first time outside of announcements in Blackboard that we've really promoted um, the mobile learn app to students, so we hope that will help in the next academic year to push up the number of um, people who have downloaded and installed the mobile learn app. Uh, with respect to the practitioner group, second bullet point on this slide, we've, we're organising a series of events um, designed to share expertise and, and, um, and for people to work together and develop a community of practice. And that, the first event in that series will actually be a session at the Learning and Teaching Symposium in early July. And um, either Ricky Morgan Tamasunas, who chairs the Learning Futures Group, or Jeremy Colwell, who is the deputy chair, will be coming along to that session to begin, we hope, to open up a dialogue between, on the one hand, the institution's Learning Futures group and this um, practitioner group of staff working at the, the kind of learning and teaching coalface. Um, we've managed to uh, get 
academic staff in four of the schools to sign up to uh, specific pilots of different mobile learning approaches. It, it, uh, there are five, I think, happening in semester one next year, one in SSHL, one in Westminster Business School, two in Life Sciences, and one in Architecture and the Built Environment. They're broadly of two types. Um, one type is seeking to use mobile learning approaches, technology inside of the classroom to engage students um, in le during lectures. So this is essentially using um, either a web-based system or a texting system to uh, offer in-class polls to students so that lectures can be broken up by moments of interaction uh, where the academic seeks to find out if the students are actually understanding the broad con concepts of what they're trying to um, deliver during the lecture. And then the other uh, broad type of pilot are ones that are being done outside of the classroom and what might be described best as situated learning and the best example there perhaps is in architecture the built environment where students will be going out in groups to building sites um, with the task of critiquing the health and safety arrangements for the building site. In fact, it just occurs to me that they didn't really need to send the students out. They could actually do that in Marlebone, couldn't they? Anyway, but they're going to go out to various building sites and take photographs with their smartphones and then post those photographs directly to blogs inside Blackboard and comment and critique what they photographed and then share the photographs and comments with the other, the other groups that make up the class of students. Um, fourth bullet point on this slide. What we want to do in the next few months is work out more clearly with the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Chancellor of the Connection between the FlexiLearn project and the Learning Futures initiative. I think that's really important that those two things tie up together. And I think already in one conversation with Ricky, she's very keen that we have this practitioner group of staff who are you know, in the classroom regularly. And she wants, I think, them to feed in uh, as, as best they can to the deliberations of the Learning Futures um, work. And then finally, uh, further down the path, we will start um, our evaluation, which is a requirement of the GIST funding of what we've done. And uh, that there'll be two particular arms to that linked to, those, to two of the objectives um, that I went through on the very first slide. So we'll be putting, uh, we'll be working probably with the Students' Union actually to get some student focus groups together and find out from students who have downloaded the mobile app um, what they've done with it once they've downloaded it and did they find it at all useful. We'll also be looking actually at students who didn't download the app because I'm sure there will be some or we'll try to try to speak to them as well and find out why they didn't download the app. Um, and then um, the other thing we'll be doing is evaluating the different pilots uh, of mobile learning approaches, approaches being conducted in the schools in semester one next academic year. Um, so if you want to know more about this project, of course, you can speak to me. Um, however, you can also look at the inevitable website about the project. That's the screen grab of the front page. And the uh, link to the website is at the bottom of this slide. I think that's just about it. Um, enjoy the rest of the meeting. I will, however, end by telling you a rather funny story, very, very short funny story. This is my third take of this recording. And I've been spending the last hour and a half working out why the first two had no audio. And I was cursing this goddamn product, Blackboard Collaborate, that I've been using to make this. Then I finally discovered I'd actually forgotten to switch my microphone on. Embarrassing. OK, bye. <laughs>